Okay, welcome back. So in this next and final notebook, we're gonna go through a couple of advanced topics. We're gonna to go through them kind of quickly because we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to demonstrate uh, two things. One is using what I call the Unity prior in Spline Calip, and then finally using Spline Calip for multi-class calibration. So you should be in the notebook called Calibration Workshop Advanced. And again, what I'm gonna recommend is that you make a copy of it and open that up, work in the copy, and then restart and clear all outputs. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the Unity prior. And this is something that comes up often when we're dealing with very small calibration training sets. And what this means is we wanna basically put some weight on the line y equals x. And that is if we don't see any data in a region, we wanna assume that it's probably close to well calibrated in that area. Given that we, we don't know anything else in the region, if we don't know anything else or we don't have a lot of data, let's tend to guess towards the line y equals x. This is very helpful when you have very small data sets. So in spline calib, there are three parameters called unity prior, unity prior weight, and unity prior grid size. And when you set it to true, it will augment the training data uh, with observations along that axis. So we're gonna demonstrate this. So first do the imports, then uh, this next few cells of code, I'm just gonna go through quickly. And all this is doing is helping me generate some synthetic data. So we're gonna pretend that this is the truth and we're gonna generate some data as if this is the truth. So what this means is that we're gonna have some data about scores X. And then when the score is, let's say 0.3, the true probability is gonna be the value of the function. So up here, it's gonna be like 0.6. So we're gonna generate some synth synthetic data in a situation where we know the true answer and then kind of see what happens as we do calibration. So here, the X vec is the uncalibrated scores. The prob vec is the true probability for that score. And the Y vec is then the outcomes that we're gonna observe based on the true probability. And we're trying to get back, ideally we wanna get back this function, which I call F1, which has this pattern. So I'm gonna generate some data and I'm gonna generate very few data points. I'm gonna generate just 100 data points just to illustrate uh, a couple of things. So we generate this data and let's just plot the reliability diagram. So you see, because the data is so sparse, things are really all over the place. We don't have that many observations in any one bin, but you could kind of see that they're, they're certainly lower closer to zero and bigger closer to one. And now we're gonna fit uh, a spline column to this data, just 100 data points. And first we're gonna turn off this unit, what I call this unity prior. So we're not gonna have any of this, any prior bias towards the line y equals x. And we're gonna fit it. And here's the curve we come up with. So we see it's not so bad. We can now compare that to what the true answer is. And we see it's reasonable for 100 data points. This is not a bad result. And if we compare the log losses, we see this is the uncalibrated log loss. This is the log loss after our calibration. And this last number is the log loss if we actually knew the right answer, what the log loss of the true right answer is. So we see we've gone most of the way from uncalibrated to kind of perfection. This would be the perfect answer we could have gotten is if we actually knew the answer. So it shows that even with 100 data points, we're able to make a significant improvement towards the best we could get. Next, what I wanna demonstrate though is adding in this unity prior. So I'm gonna add in a unity prior with a weight of 25. What that means is I'm gonna put some, put some synthetic data along the line y equals x, and I'm going to give that, that set of data a weight of 25. So it's gonna count like 25 data points worth of, of observations. So we have 100 data points of data. So this is gonna be like, one quarter of the data that's already there, we're gonna give it that much weight and we're gonna fit it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, this time with a unity prior weight of 100. So I'm gonna weight actually this prior exactly as much as all of the other data. And we can run that. And now let's see what happens with these curves. 
So you see this, this outermost curve was the first curve with no unity prior. And then as we add in 25 and 100 data points worth, it starts pulling us closer to the line y equals x. So this is a, a parameter that you could adjust manually. Um, and if you see that your curve is behaving poorly in certain regions, it might make sense to add in a little of this to help regularize and stabilize it. And then if we look at the log losses, we see that um, actually adding in a little bit of unity prior weight in this case helped us a little bit when we added the 25 data points worth. When we added in 100 data points worth, it started to make it worse. So that's just a quick demonstration of one of the knobs in spline Calib that, that you can play with manually. And, and there's a lot more. I, I don't have time to go through all of it uh, today. There, is, uh, there are some resources that I'll share at the end that will go through some of these knobs in more detail. Next, I want to talk about multi-class calibration. So calibrating a multi-class model is considerably more com complex because you, you have multiple dimensions now. You can't just rank things from, from left to right. You have different classes, so it makes it much more complicated. So Spline Cap Calib handles this by taking a one versus rest approach. So we basically take each class and calibrate the probability of it being in that class versus not in that class. After we calibrate each column, the problem is we don't know that our probabilities will necessarily sum to one anymore because each calibration is done independently. So then we renormalize each row to make sure that it sums to one. And that's the approach that Spline Calib takes. So to demonstrate this, we're going to work on the MNIST data set. So you need to have Keras installed. So please pip install Keras if you haven't already. Uh, and this is just to get the MNIST data. You could also get the MNIST data from this website. But we're going to import MNIST and we're going to load in the data. And I'm going to go through, so just if you've never worked with MNIST before, this is kind of what it looks like. This is like a handwritten five. It's just grayscale images. Um, and what we're doing here, just to build a model, I just wanted to build a multi-class model to demonstrate this on. We're basically going to do PCA, extract 30 components, and then run a random forest model on uh, these 30 components. So I got to let that all run. That might take, uh, might take a couple minutes or two. So I might pause this video until it's done running. Okay, that took a few minutes uh, for me to run, but it's all done now. So just to review, we took this random forest model. Uh, we trained it on this data. It's a multi, it's to create a multi-class classifier. And now we made our predictions and we got our hard predictions. If we look at our performance of the uncalibrated model, we see that the log loss was 0 0.305 and the accuracy was 0 0.94, 94% accuracy. And uh, then we generated this cross-validation training data like we did before, and we calibrated it. And again, this whole process took like five minutes or so on my machine. If it's taking long for you, please go to the, the notebook that's already run through if you want to follow along. Um, but we fit 10 different calibrators, and they're all wrapped up in this one spline calib object. And then we use this calibration new calibration object to calibrate. So let's look now at how the calibrated results compare to the uncalibrated results. And we see quite a, quite a, quite an improvement in performance in terms of log loss. Our log loss before was 0 0.3051 and now it's 0.1797. So it really did actually make quite a big difference. And now let's look at see, did it improve our accuracy at all? Now for multi-class problems, it can often happen that you do better in accuracy after calibration because you're you're trying to resolve these situations where uh, kind of the model was very unsure. Um, and here we see a slight increase. It got two more cases right after calibration uh, overall than it did before. And then finally, just to show one thing you can do is you can look at all of the individual calibration plots. And this is also just to show some other functionality of spline calib is uh, these are the 10 individual calibration curves and how they fit the different classes. And you can see that each 
have a different pattern. It's not the same pattern in every place. Um, but you can see the splines fit the data and do a pretty good job of fitting the data everywhere. Okay. Well, that's the end of this workshop. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, especially more details about, about Spline Calib, you can find some tutorials here on the website I've listed. Um, thanks again. Uh, please feel free to contact me with any questions and thank you for, for joining me.